for me, I forgot so many things. And maybe it wasn't that I forgot so many things. It's that for so much of my life, all I wanted was whatever was next. And, you know, I have so many beautiful memories. So many things that, that took place that I guess I didn't appreciate. But I would really love for people to come in and just be reminded of, of something really beautiful that happened in their life or, or of someone. That's what I want. I want to inspire people uh, and I want people to smile. I want them to see this and smile. You know, that's really important to me. I met Phil uh, when we started Big Car uh, back in 2004, I think is when we started renting space at the Murphy Arts Center. I moved to Fountain Square in 2000, so I probably actually met Phil uh, around 2000 going to Hot House and, and different um, shows that he had of his work and, and other artists that he wanted to represent. And, and I learned more about Phil, uh, you know, that when they had closed down the fairs, he opened the Murphy Art Center, so artists had a place to go. And I wrote like this big proposal about how every city in the world has banked on the arts, you know, for its success. We can do the same thing with Fountain Square, so I can bring 50 artists overnight, and that's what happened. And that's what transformed Fountain Square. You know, I, I committed to the arts in Indianapolis, and um, Throughout all of these different um, projects and, and endeavors, you know, my main purpose was to the artists of the city. We came up with the idea to create Masterpiece in a Day. We created prize money. You didn't have to pay to get in it. And we were gonna give you lunch for free. And that's how it was built. This was a gift to the artists of the city. Things like that, Things, things that continue on are, are really made from the heart. So last year, uh, I, I ran into him. Jim, my husband, um, Jim Walker, also received a creative renewal grant at the same time as Phil. And I ran into him at that event. And talking to him, I was just thinking it would be incredible if Phil made a room of wood, <laughs> you know, just where people were all consume like they just walk into this piece and um, I called him and I was like hey do you want to I'd like to commission a show from you things up and make these little collages and then reproduce them perfectly you know the tears and the shadows and they would look like the corner was lifting up and you know it was the 80s and yeah so primarily that's what I did and then then also uh, I really loved making woodcut prints David Morrison was uh, one of my teachers and he loved making woodcut prints and he he made us love making those too You know, I've been carving for about 20 years now, and I wanted to create, you know, basically paintings that people could touch. And so I suppose it was just a natural transition to buy some bigger tools and cut a bigger piece of wood. This, there's a left and a right. This one's a U-gouge for making lines. You know, I'm not a very gentle man. I don't have a lot of finesse, right? I'm, give me a 20 ounce mallet and a 40 millimeter chisel and just let me tear at it. 
African mahogany is like, it's like this, you know, it's like a rock. It's tight grained, it's beautiful, and, and it will hold just about anything I can throw at it. I worked with the guys, um, Mike and Johnny Greeley at uh, Northwest Lumber, and they were really amazing um, to work with me on this. And they actually ordered this quarter song. Um, they, you know, Johnny was like, we're gonna save your arm and do this in quarter song rather than the planks that I'm used to carving. So this is a matter of this all the way across, every one. And then these were all carved just like this. So there was no ideas of what was going on this. Like I had wood hanging. I had every one of these panels in place and had no idea what I was gonna put on it. I had, to, I had to create the canvas first. And then I had to live with it for a while. I don't know if it's Asian in particular that I'm drawn to. I take that back. Yes, I am. You know, I love woodcut prints. I love making woodcut prints. Ed Funk was absolutely the most amazing person to ever create woodcut prints. You know, we were, we were peers uh, that met doing a show together at Rushman Gallery in 1990. We became studio mates. Um, you know, we became best friends, and then I, you know, um, started representing his artwork, and then we became business partners. And so we had, you know, a lot of years that, that I spent watching his work. My interest in, in woodcut prints was renewed a couple years ago, and I was, I had a client, and drove out to his house, and it was, it just had a, you know, I just knew there was something odd about this, right? He meets us at the door and brings us in, and and the place is just littered with art. He reaches down and turns over the first one and hands it to us. We're looking at 16th, 17th, and 18th um, hundreds uh, Japanese woodcut prints, originals. He handed me this print of this bridge and it was beautiful and he said, you know, this is such and such a print and he said, this one's okay. A really good one is about $100,000. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do and I have, I have worked with fish and boats and water and fire and flowers my whole artistic career. And, you know, the, the boats represented different things for me. It, it, originally, John Bridge, who I spoke about, who I started Masterpiece in a Day with, I was actually commissioned to create Masterpiece in a Day. And um, I did a large Viking burial carving for him, and that was the first one. <laughs> You know, the boats remind me of my father and my parents. I went fishing with my parents every weekend when I was a kid. Well, 2013, I did a, um, I spent an entire year working on a series of boats. And I, I, I carved a boat for Autumn, the woman I love, and she wanted one of my carvings, so I made a small boat on fire. And she loved it. And she said, you should do a hundred of these. So me, with my spring-loaded arm, right, I, said, I announced on social media, I'm gonna make a hundred of these. So now all of a sudden I have to make these boats. And then three weeks later, my father passed away. When I stood beside my father, and, or, you know, I went to the house and, and uh, his, his body was laying there, which was just a shell, you know, the, the idea of the human spirit was solidified for me at that very moment. You know, not 
not too long after, you know, Ed passed away. And so the, the burning boats became about souls on their journey. got a, um, a digital projector that I borrowed from a friend and, and this big collage of images, which is where I started, and started laying things out. You know, this, this fish in this boat was so cool, the experience of taking all these photographs. And so I blew this fish up and, you know, saw how it looked on this wall of wood, um, and uh, that was it. And then I just started drawing from there. I did a lot of samples with this, and I, I'm not that kind of person. I am not that kind of person. I don't sketch, I don't, I just go at it, right? And um, this time I, I really stopped thinking about that. Before I started carving, I did a lot of texture samples and um, you know, seeing what kind of different effects I could get with different textures and, and cuts. It really was tough making a decision on what kind of paint to use because I wanted the grain to show through for the most part. They gave me all the end cuts. So this is exactly the cutoffs of this, so I knew exactly what it was gonna look like on the piece. Right. And that's super important. Especially since I go through that, that painful, putting paint on there. Uh -huh. You have no idea how hard it was to paint that water. Right. I mean, because it's significant. It's Huge. It's a huge area. It's like the most important part of this piece is the color of that water. Mm -hmm. So that's what there's so many blue samples over there. Right. And it's all the same blue. It's just different gradients of transparency or layers of transparency and, and, and white mm -hmm. to, to get just the right blue. And then the thing just started to take on a life of its own as it started to carve, which is what happens with wood. And sometimes, you, you know, I had to regrind certain tools so that they were the shapes I wanted and, and the, the uh, angles. And, you know, doing all these spiral flowers was a real challenge. And I ended up using a quilting pattern to make that flower. And I, don't, I, I lost count at 175, so I have no idea how many are actually on this wall. And then things began to change and the ideas began to develop and I have every chip that I carved out of the piece. They're saved in boxes and buckets. Really kind of cool. Did you um, leave any of the blood soaked ones from yeah, when you cut your finger? Yeah, some of that's in there mm -hmm. and there's a pair of gloves and my pencil and yeah. a couple pairs of old work gloves are thrown in it. That's great to hear. I, I just, I didn't know that this was what he was, I didn't know exactly what he was going to do, but I trusted him and I was right to do so. <laughs> so that's, that's how I, I feel about it. Um, I feel really, really, um, I don't know what the word, whether it's lucky or blessed or what it is, I feel very fortunate that you know, Shate trusted me to allow me to to do what I do and and to not have any parameters and just to be able to do it, this as it comes along. <laughs> you know, 
I'm painting this giant oh piece yeah. with this brush, right? Uh -huh. You know, Autumn is up here just cracking up and taking pictures of me because, you know, I have a number one brush <laughs> and I have this giant thing. And I'm sitting in this chair with this giant wall. IMOCA's purpose is to support artists. Not all artists, um, but by supporting artists and giving them everything they need and the resources they need to, to create something, this is what can happen. And it's, it's the most we've invested in a local artist so far. I think that with any work of art, you get pieces of people. This was like the first the second tattoo I had done, so this this one here is, you know, forever old. It's 26 years old. You're getting a moment uh, or more, like in this case, this piece is over a year of Phil's life. So the tattoos, you know, the flowers are in, in here, and, and the, I have this giant fish tattooed on me, and I had the boat on fire. Um, my whole side is this boat on fire, and um, so the elements are still there, the recurring elements. When you get it up, you also know um, it's going to come down, and I get sad towards the end of every show. <laughs> So there's so much chaos, and you know, there's you know personally I thrived on it for a long period of time, you know, and and there's a lot of there's a lot of bad and a lot of sad things in this world, and and I want to make inspiring, hopeful pieces. You know, that's what I want to do.